is your relationship with time? Are you wired and tired, stressed and overwhelmed, busy and going nowhere, or just want to scale your business? Welcome to Take Back Time with your host, Penny Zanker. Penny focuses on books, strategies, tools, and tips to help you work smarter and approach your time more strategically. As a result, you can have more energy, focus, and get more done in less time. Be more efficient and effective. Get ready to take back time. Hey, everyone. It's Penny Zanker, and it's Take Back Time. And today, I am excited to have Julie Bestry back with us. 20-year veteran in organizing, and she is a rock star. We had a really great part one conversation. As I said, she's a certified professional organizer, and her company's called Best Results Organizing in Chattanooga. And we wanted to start talking more about types of organizers. And also, I realized, and she got upset that I didn't actually ask her the question that I always ask, but I'm going to do that today. And actually, I'll start with that, and then we can move out from there. So, Julie, welcome to the show. It's great to be back. Thank you, Penny. So there's two questions that I always ask everyone. Okay. So the first one is, how do you define productivity and why? Well, I define productivity in two parts of one sentence. So it's doing the things that get you closer to your goals and that help you sleep at night. Ooh, I like that part. Haven't heard anything like that before. Because if you have created an expectation that you are going to accomplish certain things, that you're going to be productive, that you are going to do things for work, for your family, for your personal life. Okay. And even if you only do a tiny bit of what you planned, you are at least incrementally closer to your goal than you were the day before. But if you have overplanned and you overplan day after day, and there are things that you have not accomplished. Sometimes it's because it's something that you didn't need to be doing. Some, you know, you could outsource it, somebody else could do it. Sometimes you're doing it because it wasn't your goal, but someone else's goal, and you were living up to somebody else's expectation. But sometimes there really are things that you want to do. And if you aren't moving every day incrementally closer to your goal, you're going to feel demoralized. But when you get in bed at night, you don't think about what you've accomplished. You think about what you haven't accomplished. You think about what's rolling over. Unfortunately, rollover minutes in our lives don't work as well as rollover minutes for like our phone plan. Like if we have task after task after task rolling over from day to week to month to year, if your goals for 2021 are the same as the ones for 2020, well, maybe you can give yourself a pass because you've been in lockdown for eight months or more. But most of the time when we don't accomplish what we set out to do, we feel bad. And when we feel bad, especially if we feel bad about ourselves, we worry. We worry about, are we who we think we are? Are we who we want to be? And we don't sleep well. And if we don't sleep well, then there's a whole myriad of health issues, mental health, physical health. Right. And then we're not productive, and right? Then, and then we're not productive. Meal. Exactly. Because if we can't sleep at night because we're feeling badly the next day, we're going to have mushy brains and we're going to accomplish less. And it becomes a vicious cycle. Totally. I have to tell you what Penny Zanker's planner has in it. Tell me. So Penny Zanker's plan has in it something to help that challenge. So I have something called the 135 Daily Planner. This wasn't meant for me to plug my planner, but hey, what the hell? It's my show, right? It's how do we balance urgency and importance? So I'll just go through quickly. The main thing I want to get to is how we can sleep better. But it's one thing that brings us, what's the one action you're going to take today? And this is a high level planner. This isn't put this in your calendar. That's the second step. This is when I'm stepping back to think about it. Mm -hmm. kind of planner where you say, what's one thing that's going to get you the action you're going to take towards your long-term strategic goal, whatever that might be for you personally or for you know work or whatever. Three things that are getting you towards midterm milestones mm -hmm. and five things that absolutely must be done by you today. Emphasis on must be done and that it's not, you know, we have to challenge that. Is it really urgent and really important? And by you, can you delegate it, right? Does it have to be done by you? But the most important thing is the piece where I used to be one of those, you know, 
us overachievers, we just make really long lists. And then at the end of the day, like you said, we just focus on what we didn't do instead of giving ourselves a pat on the back on what we did do. So a friend of mine and I, we decided that we were going to, at the end of every day, we were going to capture our win and write them down because we forget. We, we push those off so easily what our wins are, right? We don't celebrate them and we're just off to the next thing. So in my daily planner, there's a little section for daily wins that you can write down, even though it might not have been on your list, you still might have taken a step towards your long-term goal, but it just wasn't the thing that you had identified. Sure. So, and then you get to recognize it, that these are the things that I did do. And so that helps you to sleep a little bit better. So just a thought process for people to think about, is that something that they could do as part of their daily process as well, is just to remember and take a look at all the things that they did do. So I love that. And I'm a big believer in the idea that it takes a village. I think that it's great if we have accountability partners or I'm in a mastermind group with other professional organizers and we discuss our weekly goals. We, we send out two emails every Sunday to the five of us. We have a recap of these were the goals that I sent you last week and this is how I did on them. You know, good, bad or indifferent. Right. And then we send another list of what we intend to do. And we are cheerleaders for one another. And, you know, in some ways it, it keeps, I got to say, it keeps us honest, whether you have a partner at home or whether it's an accountability partner or a mastermind group or anybody who, if you're finding it hard to sort of look at what you've done well, having other people sort of repeat back to you hey, that's a really hard thing to do. And you took a bold stride forward. We're really good. The last time you and I talked, we talked about how we're good at fulfilling our obligations for other people. Right. One of the tricks of accountability is we're doing things for ourselves, but because we have somebody else to sort of report to, right. <laughs> to witness, to testify right. <laughs> as to what we've accomplished, we get to take more credit for our accomplishments yes. because someone else has helped us acknowledge them. And yeah, and that's important. Absolutely. So remind me, what do we come here to talk about? Because we're going to get off on all these like, you know, <laughs> different topics. We said we were going to talk about types of planners, right? Paper planners, because last time we sort of talked about the mindset of using a paper planner for all those people who feel guilty because they're not getting as much out of technology for planning themselves. Right. And then we sort of zip through a lot of the, the features and details of having enough you know, space to write in, lay out the practical features, the weight and the size and the binding. But a lot of people will say to me, well, what kind of planner should I use? And I'm like, well, what do you want to accomplish? We talked about Simon Sinek and know your why. So right. I have sort of broken down planners, planner types into three major categories. And then, you know, we'll talk a little bit about specialty planners and hybrid work. But this will give people who are saying, okay, I'm ready to go out and buy a paper planner. I hated my last paper planner, but instead of just standing in the middle of the office supply store, which don't do because you know somebody near you is probably not going to be wearing a mask <laughs> or going online to buy it. What types to look at? And I am generally brand agnostic, but I will, in the course of this, tell you the advantages and disadvantages and some of the things that are my favorites. The first type of planner is just what I would call a basic planner. You know, if you've ever gone to the dentist's office and they would say, okay, we're going to schedule your next appointment. And it would just be these columns from like 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. and a column for every day of the week. And it would be page after page of that. So you go into an office supply store and those basic planners are just a month, a monthly view and then a daily view. And it's largely just a place to put your appointments. The thing is tasks are not appointments. So I want people to think you need a place to sort of brainstorm and put your tasks and figure things out. Schedule appointments, schedule meetings, schedule things that have a fixed place in your schedule. You want to put your fixed things into the planner first. And then what we will talk about with in just a minute is time blocking and time in general and how 
creating a time for specific types of tasks is useful. And I know you talk a lot about time blocking. So I have my method to it, but, but what I wanted to point out is when we put our appointments, most people, that's their calendar. They put their appointments in their calendar, going back to that people pleasing, doing things for other people in a way that's what we're booking in our calendar. That's what most people's calendar looks like is their appointments, which is their obligations to other people. So I just want to, you know, put that as a thing, like, and I know you were saying, figure yourself out on your tasks and then, then you can, you know, we'll come to time blocking and you block them in. So I want people to understand that you still have to schedule what's important to you and, and what your tasks and activities are, or even at a different level. And we'll, we'll get into that, but I, I absolutely. Think- and and you know, what you just said triggered, I don't want people to think that their obligations to others are their only important things. But if you have fixed appointments, so if you know you always have a stand-up meeting at one o'clock on right. Mondays, you're not going to put a dentist appointment there, or you're not going to plan to go study for, for a test or something like that. So if you have firm commitments, treat yourself as your number one most important client or your number one most important obligation. I absolutely agree that you have to put a focus on what you need. But unfortunately, because we have jobs and families, we do sometimes have to put our obligations to others as a fixed appointment because- Right. But you don't mean, unfortunately, that we have families. No, no. Unfortunately, we sometimes have to consider them before we can consider ourselves. Because if you have scheduled a doctor's appointment for a particular date and you don't go to that doctor's appointment because you thought- okay, well, instead I'm going to go to that new Zumba class. Problem is that doctor's going to charge you for the appointment you miss and your insurance company is probably going to fuss at you and there's a whole other. Right. So we've got the basic calendars, office supply calendars. A step up from that are at a glance calendars, which are planners that have a real basis in uh, calendaring and scheduling, but they do have places for, for some of the additional areas for writing tasks, for for tracking your expenses that day. The classics we have seen, Franklin Covey, the Levenger Circa, both of them let you have a basic calendar with some add-ons. You've got a monthly view, daily view, and then you can DIY with other pages that you find useful, including places for mind mapping, brainstorming. Uh, Passion Planner is a step up further from the at a glance that it is one of those popular planners out there now I can get it in a few different sizes, but it is again, a little more than just calendaring. And what I love is planner pad. You've heard me talk about planner pad, but you know, I'm not going to get any money for this, but planner pad and people can go on the website has what they call a funnel view. And so at the top, You have these areas where you can look at your create basically weekly lists because you're you're getting a weekly view at a time of just brainstorming everything you want to accomplish. But you can use each of those little columns at the top for your projects so you can group your tasks. Then there's that center area where it funnels down to say, these are the to-dos that I'm going to try to accomplish this day. And at the bottom, you have a place for appointments. And then off at the side, they even have a place for tiny little bits of notes, like the calls you need to return, the expenses, and so on. And what I like about Planner Pad is that it is very straightforward, but because everything you're dealing with in that week, you know, you, you still have a monthly view, but everything sort of funnels down from that brain dump that you mm-hmm. did into that. And it, you know, projects broken down to tasks, funneling the functions. And what I love about all of these basic planners, because they give you a view, is that they're good for time blocking. And I told you that I was going to talk about this. There's something that we professional organizers use with a lot of our clients. It's popular to work use with children, with people with ADHD, with anybody who has trouble visualizing time. It's called time timer. Time timer, the way it works is you set the timer and as the time elapses, the little red disc disappears. So for people who have trouble visualizing how time works, this helps them develop that skill. Well, time blocking, which I'm sure you have a lot to say about too, gives you the opportunity to say, 
not necessarily, I'm going to do X task every day at three o'clock, but I'm going to do this type of task in the afternoon when it matches my energy level. So maybe you're doing administrative work in the morning because you haven't had your coffee kick in yet, or maybe you really have your creative work late in the day. I am a night owl. So from 11 at night till about one or two in the morning, that's when I'm doing my writing. And so I have time blocked at least three nights a week for writing blog posts for, for creating things. So, and I'm total mush at night, right? So just to jump in here, like, so everybody's got to understand what their energy cycles are and when's the best time to do different activities. Absolutely. And so if you time block, if you say, okay, you're going to give yourself and time blocking can be two back-to-back Pomodoros, those 25 minute blocks with like five minutes in between. It can be a two hour block followed by break and then a completely different time block. You can color code by using your highlighter and pretending, you know, you're back in social studies, highlighting the important things, but you're visualizing the time that you have carved out for a particular project because it's like an assignment. Because remember, we talked about how if we're obligated to someone else, we're doing a better job at hitting our goals. So sometimes that someone else is just current view version of you is obeying past and future version of you with a little time traveling by creating those blocks, whether they're color coordinated or whatever. But by creating this, the planner, the simplest planner pads or planner types, these paper planners with the calendaring section that shows you the time of day side by side by side can really give you a sense of empowerment for what you're going to do in your particular time block. When I think it really helps you also to see, you know, that visualization for me is super important and it's a top down visualization, but, and time blocking isn't the same for everyone. So some people believe that time blocking is taking your to do's and just blocking them on your calendar. We're talking about a more top down view of where you're setting different categories uh, that you're blocking more strategic, right? Mm -hmm. So that you're aligning your goals with your tasks and and you're able to to see it on the calendar. And if you're also tracking your time Mm -hmm. with this, you're going to identify what percentage of time you're spending in each block and what percentage of time you need to be spending in each block in order to meet your goals. And then you can identify the gaps and traps in the middle. Right. Because if you've set blocks of time to deal with bookkeeping, for example, Maybe you have set that up for a you know, 90 minute slot every day or every other day at one o'clock and you just aren't getting it done. If you're getting interrupted, if you're not getting it done because of interruptions, then that gives you a clue. How do I block the interruptions? How am I blocking the distractions? Right. Um, if you are procrastinating and that's why you're not getting it done, then you have to look at that. And sometimes you could be working that whole 90 minute block and still not be getting your bookkeeping done. And that's where you wave the big white flag and say, I should be using my time for my unique skills and I need to hire a bookkeeper to be doing this. Bookkeeping isn't one of them, right? (laughs) Right. So time blocking is, is going to not only increase your productivity by what you do when you're doing it, but it also is going to give you all sorts of clues to where your other obstacles lie. So that's what I have to say about the basic paper planner types. Just cover paper planners. We covered the time blocking as well, which is a huge, important topic in itself. So, And then there's the fancy ones. We have to talk about the fancy ones because there are weird categories. And we're just going to talk about two of them. One is all of a sudden, the last few years, everybody's making paper planners with animal themes. I'm not talking about like an animal print cover. There's the panda planner. Now, the panda planner has a place for inspiration and goals. It has these categories like today's priorities, morning review, things I will do to make this week great, which is incredibly motivational for somebody inclined to do that. Then there's clever fox, not just a fox, but clever <laughs> fox. That's which a double, goals. whatever they call it. Yeah, <laughs> crazy like a box. There's goals, priorities, schedules, to-dos, and there's a lot of little sections for your feelings. 
but it also has a place for a monthly review and to track your one year goals. So it's fancier than the Panda Planner. It's got some touchy feely stuff, but it's also got some metrics. And then it's got stickers. And you and I are going to probably talk about this a few times, but some people love stickers. Some people want more gold stars and vacation day stickers and things to brighten up their lives. And other people, the minute they get a planner that has stickers, those get tossed in the drawer. And then there's the simple elephant planner. So I guess your fox is clever, but your elephant is very simple. But it's like the silver fox, but it has a mind map section and it has a section for vision boards. But what people should know if they're thinking, oh, maybe the simple elephant planner is for me, it's undated. And I think we should talk about this, that any planner you get that is undated means that you have more labor up front to track things. So when we get to talking about bullet journals, we'll talk that's a lot of labor, but usually you can buy a planner that's either calendar year, you know, September through August or August through July, or calendar, you know, so the, the, the academic year and the calendar year, January to December. If you have to write in all of the dates, I think you're going to be less inclined to keep to a planner. And that's that's my personal opinion. There are some people who- Interesting, because I would think it gives you more flexibility to buy it and maybe use it for a different time period, like use it next year. So I could buy it now and, and into next year or something like that. That's a good point. You could buy 10 year, if you're afraid they're not going to make these anymore, you could buy 10 simple plan, simple elephants and just have a stack. You know, it's sort of like when they stop making the shade of lipstick that you want, uh, want, you go out and you buy them all up right away. I know exactly. As a matter of fact, today I have to scrape it out with my fingernail (laughs) because they don't make it anymore. So that's a serious problem. I understand. So those are the animals. (laughs) And then There are what I've been calling the celebrity planners. So there's Danielle Laporte's Desire Map Planner. And it's not just a calendar and a place to plan, but it has sections called Truth Bombs and Sacred Pauses. There's a gratitude section, a body and wellness section, a core desired feelings section. So if you love Danielle Laporte, you're probably going to love her planner. It might be a little energized. It might be a little woo for other people. Then there's Michael Hyatt's full focus planner, which bridges the gap between basic and fancy in a lot. And the way I look at it, because there's a lot of focus on rituals. There are weekly and quarterly previews. There's very specific ways of measuring your goals. It's a very manly metric based approach. And there's Brendan Bouchard's High Performance Planner, which has sections like your morning mindset and your performance scorecards that you figure out at the end of the day and at the end of periods of time. Again, I mean, it's called the High Performance Planner. It's very much about measuring. So it's- They're also really complex. Some of these I have to point out is because I I had Brendan's, I wanted to try it and there was so much on the page that it made me crazy. Like <laughs> just too much to do. And then you had to flip to different pages and different parts to fill it in and update it. As you're picking one of these planners, before you buy it, Look you might at- want to like download a page of it and just feel it a little bit. Cause they are available, you know, online to find out, to see which one you like, because well, how are you going to feel if you leave parts of it undone? Right. And that is, you have led into my summary perfectly, because if you want to capture your whole life in one place, you know, if you are going to pick one of these fancy planners, whether it's the animal planner or the celebrity planner, whether it's more touchy feely or metrics based, it is a place for capturing your whole life all together. But there's a lot of pressure to get it right, to fill in all of the blanks. So if you are not a particularly spiritual person, or if you really aren't likely to track how many runs you went for because you only ran as far as the refrigerator, (laughs) you're maybe going to feel some frustration with something that is filled with bells and whistles. Almost every planner has 
a website where you can click. Sometimes it's not obvious what you need to do, but you need to click and get a view of each of those pages. And sometimes you have to hit command plus or control plus to enlarge multiple yeah. times. So don't try and look at it on your phone. Look at it on it, either a tablet or a computer so that you can actually see what's there on the page. And um, print it. Print it. And, I like and, to print yeah. it and see what it's like to, to fill it in. I changed my mind. The last time we talked, we talked about speed dating. And <laughs> speed dating planner is not good. You need to have commitment. However, I'm thinking that speed dating up front with the planner makes sense so that you can make a commitment. I would say, if, since we're going to, before you can have the commitment, maybe the speed dating. But what I think this is, is like before you go on a date with somebody, you check out their Facebook page, their LinkedIn page, you Google them. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> you make sure that they are, you know, they say they all are. their selling points are, are valid. Because really, if you just looked at a planner and you didn't know that it was, I, I said, you know, the simple elephant planner is undated. Well, if there's a person out there who has been on an app for a long time, undated, there might be a reason why. <laughs> we're going to keep, keep working. We're having it. fun, just the two of us. If anybody else laughs, we're happy. But it's worth mentioning that the celebrity planners in particular, because they are so complex, they um, and, I, and I think, you know, you and I talked about this a little bit before. Planners are marketed to different audiences. You know, planners marketed to women focus on aesthetics and feelings. Planners marketed to men tend to focus on the metrics. And that brings up a lot of issues regarding power structure in terms of if you've got a venture capitalist or you've got your boss expecting you to discuss your goals, your accomplishments, things related to very discrete measurements, looking at, at tiny something point something something measurements, you're going to need to look at it in that very specific way. And if you're using a planner that doesn't give you the opportunity to measure those things, you are going to not necessarily advance in that power structure. So something to think about. And then the next type of planner and this is kind of fun, is the DIY planner. There are the bullet journals. And you and I could probably talk forever about bullet journals, but I am one of those people who says, if a bullet journal works for you, if you have already been using it and you like it, go with God. I'm very happy with you. But <laughs> I can't help you with a bullet journal because it doesn't make sense to me. There is too much flipping around. It doesn't work for my organizational structure. I can help with the individual elements of it for the brainstorming, for the little keys to figuring out what all the symbols mean, but it's complex. And people who create bullet journals tend to be inclined or encouraged to make them beautiful, to have lots of colorful markers. And oh, I had to go out and buy my daughter all of these colored markers and, and, they, and you know, she tape hours and looking for ideas. And we were doing them together because that was something we could do together. There was a lot of pressure to be creative where I'm not really that creative in that way. And, so, and that's exactly it. I am not a visually creative person. I am a functionally creative person. I want to find the way to make something work well, right. but Color coding has advantages and disadvantages. If you color code your files and you run out of a file folder in the color you need, is your whole system going to fall apart until the next time you get more file folders? So bullet journals, that's one way to DIY. James Clear has his Clear Habit Journal. It's another celebrity planner, but it comes with templates. It's put out by Baron Fig. It's got sort of that flexibility. You can DIY whole sections of it. Levenger, very old school, kind of like when we're talking about Franklin Covey for the basic planners, Levenger has all sorts of pages so that you can order up the particular kind of planner you want. There is a very cool, incredibly overwhelming and exciting at the same time, like where are we going first at Disney World kind of feel, website called Agendio, A-G-E-N-D-I-O.com, 
where you can literally build the planner of your dreams online by clicking a million different buttons and then it will just show up at your house. And cool. it is fascinating. And you can Ooh, even what's it add called? Agendio. Agendio. It's, okay. it's a website. So go to agendio.com and you pick the planner type. You can pick the elements you want. You can have it printed in particular order with things moved ar- around the page. Cool. It is the ultimate in DIY that does not require you to have the bullet journal skills of uh, visual creativity and handiwork, which would be good for me. DIY is good for the Sally types. So if you've ever seen When Harry Met Sally and Harry makes fun of her because she wants everything on the side, I'm, I'm a Sally type. I generally, I want what I want the way I want it. So if you have very specific aesthetic and and design principles that you want to live by with your planner, the DIY method is great. But it can cause overwhelm. If you've ever tried to use a bullet journal and it hasn't gone well for you, that level of overwhelm can happen. I love that Agendio website, but I felt overwhelmed. I deal with planners all the time. And I thought, okay, I'm going to pause, come back to this tomorrow. And when I got back to that tab the next day in my browser, I was still overwhelmed. There's good and bad levels of overwhelm, but you can then feel good. I'm also to recognize when you feel like you're overwhelmed and it's not working, step back and it's okay to let go of something. It's okay to say, this is not working for me. This does not feel good. This is not a fit and let go. Don't like you know, try and try. And, uh, you know, if it doesn't fit or feel, at least that's my opinion, move on to the next. I think you're totally right. I think when we have these issues that come up, one of my colleagues says this all the time, and I've embraced it as my own, the overwhelmed mind says no. So if you're overwhelmed in putting together your planner, You may be overwhelmed with a planner that has too many bells and whistles, even if you created it. And if you spend all that effort to create it and then you don't use it, you may feel guilt. So the one thing that I should mention is that a lot of people use bullet journals because they have a lot of sticky notes and loose loose pages all around. And I say that's where a tickler file comes in. Your planner is for putting information, but if you have lots of loose information that represents things that you want to do. That's what a tickler file is all about. I wrote an ebook on my site that's about a tickler file, but basically you can either either buy one or make one yourself with having folders one through 31 for all the days of the month and then 12 more for January through December. And it's a place where you are making this proactive decision. Okay, Here's this post-it note about an idea that I want to work on. Well, before I get to the point in planning, I'm going to say, I'm not going to have time to think about this till February. And it goes in the February slot. You get something in the mail telling you that you have to renew your driver's license. I think a lot of DMVs are closed right now, but you know that you have to renew it by the end of the month. You're not going to put it in on the 31st. You're going to put it in on a slot for the day of the month. So that it's on your calendar when you you know that you're going to be able to fit in an appointment to leave your desk, go and take care of it. But it gives you a chance to have the paperwork that represents that task waiting for you in the tickler file. And in the ebook, I go through that a lot. But for those who are listening, this could be paper. This could also be a tickler file on your desktop somewhere, right? Or it could be in Evernote or, right? You can use the same organizational um, structure digitally as you do physically. So just- Yes. And Deb Lee, who is another productivity specialist, has written an amazing blog post that she has updated through the years on using Evernote for a tickler file. So if you oh, Google awesome. Deb Lee Evernote tick, tickler file, you should find exactly what you need. So but one more thing about specialty planners, because I was looking up special use cases. Like my friend's daughter is a medical student. And so I was looking at, okay, what is the best planner? So if you are in a, a special situation, if you are a realtor, you know, if you have a special use case, you think you need I would Google and look at blog posts where people in your field are recommending 
planners for that. But one specialty planner that I'd be remiss if I didn't mention, Leslie Josell from Order Out of Chaos has won all sorts of awards for the academic planner. It is a specific planner design primarily for high school and college students. It's a way to really keep track of homework, appointments, after school activities. And it's something because she is an expert in, here's one of the current ones, comes in a lot of different styles. And it even comes with stickers. But we were talking about the fact that, you know, now that emojis have been normalized to not just just be a gender specific use, I think some stickers may be popular with guys as well as with girls. But one thing that I should say about all these planners is you can, if you like the digital realm, you can have a hybrid digital and paper planner system. I do. So for example, I I hybrid too. I keep my tasks and my appointments and everything in my paper planner, but I put appointments in like knowing that I was going to be speaking to you today into the digital system because it's going to give me an alert. My computer is going to say, ding, and it's going to put a notification up to give me a 30-minute warning. So if I need to put myself together because I am not Zoom ready, the computer is going to tell me that, whereas my planner requires me to look at it. The computer is basically my butler, and he's loud and anxiety-provoking, and is going to say, hey, hey, pay attention. Now you've only got 10 minutes. And if you want hybrid within any of these systems, let's say you like the DIY aspect of the bullet journal because you can have that key with all those little symbols, but you're not artistic, you can use that little system by drawing an arrow to the right to mean that you moved it forward to the next day. You can put that on any calendar system and any planner system you use. So borrow the skills from wherever you want to use them. Absolutely. Anything else? Or are we ready for some, like, pull it all together? I think I'm, re- I'm ready to pull it all together for you. And I'm going to say, have you ever wanted to exercise? Okay, nobody ever wants to exercise. But have you ever wanted to get the result that comes from exercising? So you buy exercise videos or exercise equipment or exercise outfits. Well, it is shocking to learn that making those purchases does not actually firm your abs. It does not actually help you lose weight or gain core strength or anything. Planners won't make you do the work. So buying a planner is the first step. It's not the only step. The planner won't make you do the work, but it makes sure that you assign ample time to focus on doing the work. You're still going to have to find a way to put yourself in the chair. So you can use an accountability partner, you know, phone and text one another for daily check-ins. Like I said, time blocking for categories of work is going to help you gain real insight while you do the work. Mark, Mike Vardy talks all the time about daily theming. So in addition to time blocking, there's daily theming where you get these overarching aspects of your life that are going to get covered in a particular type of day. And then I love quoting other people who have come up with good ways to look at things. And he goes by ADD Crusher, Alan Brown. I saw him at a NAPO conference a few years ago. And he said, there are only three types of tasks. There's this is what I'm doing now. There's important work that I'm not doing now. And there's BS that I'm not doing now. That's sort of key. Obviously, if there's an emergency, you know, we talked about urgent versus important. If there is fire or smoke or blood or somebody threatening a lawsuit, obviously your planner is going to have to be ignored for the moment. But other than those emergency issues, there's this is what you're doing now because you have set the tone for your day, for your week, for your month, for your year. This is what you wanted to accomplish. Your higher self, your higher past self has assigned your current self to accomplish these things so that your future self can move forward. So there's, this is what you're doing now. There's otherwise important stuff, but it's not what you're doing now. And there's all that junk that you're also not doing now. And any of those things that aren't what you're doing now, put a pin in them 
move them along. Your planner is your guide to what you should be doing. And if you commit to it, you're going to get where you want to go. If you keep working within that commitment, you're going to feel more confident. And the more confident you feel, you're going to commit even further. Momentum. You're creating that momentum. That commitment creates the momentum because you're getting the results that you want. It feels good. Like you said, you can sleep at night because you feel better. And then that's what is going to get you the results. And that's why we want to be productive. When I talk about organizing, I say the purpose of being organized isn't so you could say, hey, I'm organized. It's so that you have space and time and opportunity to be and do everything that's important to you with the people you care about. Productivity, the same way. We're not being productive so that we can win a productivity award. We're doing it so that we can sleep at night. Right. So that we feel good about the things that we've accomplished. Absolutely. So Julie, where can people find more information about you, connect with you, contact you? It's super easy because it's my name. My website is juliebestry.com. It's J-U-L-I-E. B E S T R Y dot com. My company is Best Results Organizing. It's a little play on my name because it's Julie Bestry, Best Results. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I work with overwhelmed individuals to help them get more organized, be more productive, save time and money, be more productive, and lessen their stress. So, juliebestry.com. And that's what it's all about. Well, thank you for being here in part two. Thank you for having me again. I guess I did okay the first time. I guess so, right? Here we are. No, we had a lot of good stuff that we've talked about. And we crossed a lot of different themes, even though it was under the umbrella of planning. We talked about a lot of different things. So thank you all for being here. I hope over these two sessions that you've taken some great notes, that you've gotten some ideas about which type of planner is going to be best for you, about the mindset around your planner, and understanding that You need to step back and to plan things so that you can strategically focus your time, not on what's demanding your time, but what deserves your time. So my name is Penny Zanker, and I will look forward to continuing to bring you great guests and great topics. This is Take Back Time, and we'll see you in the next episode. Thank you for listening. Today's topic is another opportunity for you to put the knowledge you learned into practice. Tune in again next week for more strategies that will help you have more energy and focus to get more done in less time so you can continue to take back time.